Hi, I'm Troy Baker, and I'm the host of HBO's The Last of Us podcast. And I also play Joel in The Last of Us video game. And I am here to answer your questions. Number one, this is not a show about zombies. This is a show and a story about love. It's a story about two people that are both lost that find each other and how they make their way through this world. Number two, the cordyceps fungal outbreak that we talk about on the show is not that far-fetched. It's actually scientifically possible. And the third thing, you will cry a lot. And you can blame Craig Mason. Absolutely not. The beauty of this is that it is two different versions, two retellings of the same story. So if you haven't played the video game, you can completely enjoy the show as a standalone. But I will tell you this, I don't think it's an either or. It's not either play the game or watch the show. This is a yes and. Play the game, then watch the show, or watch the show, then play the game, and enjoy discovering the differences. You can expect to be surprised. You can expect to be satisfied. You can expect that in every episode, there will be one of those moments that you loved so much, but just a little bit different. Trust me, I went into this not only as an actor, but also as a fan. And my arms were crossed a little bit. I was waiting to see what they were gonna do with that scene or with that character, or with that line. It's all there. This is the most accurate, truthful adaptation of a story like this that I've ever seen before. And will there be Easter eggs? Come on. Yes, to both. All of the characters that you met in The Last of Us and you fell in love with and cried over are there. There are also new characters that I can't wait for you to meet. I remember there was this moment on set and it was our first shot. And I'm sitting there, it's cold, and I'm in the middle of this massive production, in this beautiful location. And I just kind of chuckled to myself. And the person that was standing next to me said, what's so funny? And I said, if you could go back 10 years to the person that walked into the audition, I never would have believed it. This is literally a dream come true. My goal with doing the show was that whoever played Joel would teach me something that I didn't know about the character. Show me something that I missed. That's what Pedro does. He shows me that Joel is bigger than any one performance. Okay. So first of all, uh, I wouldn't get bitten. I would have died long ago not gonna survive in an apocalypse, not one bit. People would have tripped me and used me as bait. I, I'm the first to go, 100%. This is cashmere. Well, our story kicks off September 26, 2003, which is a little bit different from the game. And then we do a time jump of 20 years to where the majority of our story will take place. Selfishly, I really wanted to see what it looked like for someone else to play Joel. But the thing that, to me, added a whole new layer to the IP was not something that I expected. It wasn't something that I was looking for because it wasn't really even there. A perfect example is the character of Frank. Frank in the game is, well, if you play the game, you know. He's basically dangling feet in a bad Hawaiian shirt. But in this version of the story, he is the anchor point. And it's possibly one of the most beautiful episodes, not only of this show, but of any show I've ever seen. So that, to me, adds a whole new layer of the IP. And that's what's at the heart of this story. It's the relationships. Yeah, we have monsters that are attacking us, and yeah, there are vicious people that are doing horrible things to survive. But at the end of the day, it's how these two people feel about that and what they're going through. So, what new aspects of the show added something to 
The story? Or to the IP? You have to wait to find out. <laughs>